Good morning. I was waiting for the music to stop and it stopped and I was like, oh yeah, it stopped. So <laughs> I'm so glad to see all of you here. Um, did you guys see the sunshine? That was great. And it's still out, it looks like. Yay. Okay. So, uh, so glad to see everyone here. And as usual, I'm going to ask you to register your attendance in the red attendance books. And I think we have the shortest amount of announcements that we've had in the history of the church. So, uh, reminding you that the Paper Recycle Company is no longer offering the dumpster as a free service. They will be removing the dumpster from the parking lot soon. So, yeah. Um, does anyone else have anything? Will you please join me in the call to worship? Listen up, everyone. God has given us work to do. God has called each of us before we were even born. It was God who named us. It is God who claims us. The light of God's love shines in us. Let's shine, shine God's God love into the world. world. Amen. Amen. Thank you. As testifies coming up front, um, you may notice that Jesus Loves Me is the second song, and normally I wouldn't do that at all. But uh, I'm going to get a lot of amens out of women, I'm sure, but sometimes we men need a burning bush, a pair of pigeon, and a neon sign to get the message across. And first of all, um, last week, or oh, the week before, I guess, um, there was a lady on Facebook who asked about that song and what song to pair it with. 
few days later, a friend of mine had a pacemaker surgery, and she talked about the lady in the hospital with her being troubled, and they say Jesus loves me together. And then John Min preached about it last week, so I think I got rocked over the head, so we're going to do that song today. It's the second song. But we're going to start with Above All. Yes, she just loves me. 
Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, we will stay close beside me all the way. He's prepared a home for me, and someday His face I'll see. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Glory be to the Father. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, were without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, and will the children please come forward for a moment with Kathy? Here they come. I thought I was going to have to get Brian up here. It's always good to have one big kid in the group, you know? Besides the leader. <laughs> you mean besides you? <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you? Are you cold? It's kind of cool out there, isn't it? Today, Pastor Lee is going to talk about something that's kind of hard to... Well, maybe it's not hard for everybody else. But I'm going to admit to you that it was kind of hard for me to understand. So I read it, and I reread it, and I read it again. And then I went to Google, and Google told me what it thought it meant. And then I thought, you know what? I don't really want to trust Google to get up here and talk about Bible stuff. Google may be good for some things, but mm, maybe not for Bible stuff. So I went to Pastor Lee, and he helped me to understand it a little bit more. And so I wanted to just share with you that sometimes life is difficult and sometimes that difficulty makes us hurt but you know it's not jesus intention that any of us sh should ever hurt but sometimes when we sin we have to learn that we shouldn't do that and that's where Jesus steps in and helps us to understand that when life is difficult, when we hurt for whatever reason, that he's here to help us. And he's here to guide us and to share with us. So when you're in school, let's just take it, you know, for the full course. When you're in school and you got that math problem, calculus, anybody? I can't do it, sorry. Geometry, I have a hard time with geometry, and I can't draw a straight line even with a ruler. Insurance, nope. There's a lot of things in life that are difficult, and there's stuff in the Bible that are hard, that's hard to understand. But don't give up, and Jesus will always, always, always help you to understand. If he doesn't give you the wisdom between you and him, he'll put people like Pastor Lee in your life that, that will help to guide you as well. So remember, when life's hard, when things are challenging, Jesus is there. Amen. All right? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we know you're always with us. You're with us every single day, every single moment. Be with us when life is hard, when hurts happen, when we sin and it causes pain in our life, help us to know that you're here to teach us and guide us and love us always. Help us to always walk close with you. In your name we pray. Amen.
let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This is time to pray what we have heard today and our own personal prayer, our own, own, own things. We can ask, we can ask the help to Jesus. So let's pray together this time. God of Isaiah, you are our God too. You spoke to the prophets, but your message did not end with them. There is still work to be done, and we pray to hear your call afresh. Help us joyfully claim our role as your beloved servants, knowing that you provide all that we need to do our work. You walked with us before we were ever born. And you continue to hold us by the hand each and every day of our lives. Thank you for your love and grace. Please grant your healing to our sickness and suffering. Please comfort our broken hearts with your peaceful hands. And make us share our joys and happiness with one another. We love you, Lord. And now we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. It is time to respond to God's grace in our lives and support the ministry of this church with our gift. Let's share our offering now. As we're doing the offering, if you can um, stand, we're going to sing Jesus the Very Thought of Thee, and it's to the tune of Happy the Home When God Is There, in case you've not heard this song. <laughs> Show the 
You have already given us all that we need. Help us trust your continued care so that we may share with others the abundance of your blessings. Strengthen us for service and remind us of the great joy that awaits those who answer your call. Accept our gifts and give us new songs of praise as we celebrate the opportunity to be in ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat>
Please stand for the scripture reading. Our scripture today, excuse me, is from Isaiah 42, 1 through 9. Here is my servant whom I, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. Please be seated. Please children are dismissed for the children's church. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Let's take a moment to greet each other. Let's say, may peace be with you. 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 Henley Nowen used the word wounded healer in his book. Jesus is the wounded healer. And he calls us also to be wounded healers. There are many pains in this world. As time goes on, more and more kinds of pains are pouring out. Although it seems that we have become rich materially, but souls, our souls gradually become desolate inside the people. Everyone has their own pain, and this world is full of pain. So Jesus came to this world as a healer. Jesus heals from the very small to the big. When I was a child and at a school, my stomach hurt during class. It was an emergency. But I didn't have the courage to say I wanted to go to the restroom. At the time, I was wearing uh, a cross necklace. So I brought the, that cross to my stomach and I prayed earnestly because it was an emergency. Oh God, please may calm my stomach. And surprisingly, my stomach got better so I could go to restroom after class. What a tiny miracle it is. But I prayed with a young heart, God healed me. People would say it was a coincidence. But for me, as a child, it was God's help. It's very small. I know a person who had to remove rib bones due to cancer. However, that woman prayed to God, and with God's help, she completed the surgery successfully without removing, removing the bone and recovered in good health. That is a big miracle. How about our hurts? Jesus also heals 
our hurts. We all have experienced heartbreak in our lives. We may be betrayed or our relationship was broken. There may be times when we are disappointed because our wishes do not come true. But we must also have experienced that God heals such a broken heart. Jesus heals all kinds of pain. It is an attribute of God. There are two main aspects of God. One is the God who judges. And the other is the God who heals and restores. Today's scripture, Isaiah, shows us that two aspects of God together. Isaiah can also be called it a miniature version of Bible. What is good to remember about Isaiah, this is like the entire Bible. Isaiah has 66 chapters, like the Bible has 66 books. Isaiah has 66 chapters. In addition, Isaiah can be divided into two parts, chapter 1 through 39, 40 to 66. Just like there is there are 39 books on the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament, the same like Bible. So in the first part of Isaiah, chapter 1 to 39, talked about God who judgment, God who judges. And chapter 40 to 66 are about God who heals and restores. So that two part is in Isaiah. In the book, Isaiah continues to shout, trust in God alone. Trust in God alone. Please, please. However, southern Judea, Judea people rely on other countries and the power of this word rather than God. Isaiah continued to shout out the message that they would be punished and judged if they did not rely on God. The people did not listen. So they got the punishment. But the book of Isaiah did not end up with punishment only. From chapter 40, there is a message that God will restore and heal. Chapter 40 begins with this sentence, Comfort, oh comfort my people. This is the beginning of the chapter 40. God does not give up. He heals and restores. So is our life. Just as Joshua made a new covenant with the tribes of Israel, do you trust God only or in other things? We have to make a choice. Do we choose God or money? Do we rely on God only or power? Our property or asset? Some, per some person? Or the strong forces around us? We choose only God. And we rely only on God. But we all know as weak humans... We sometimes betray God and choose something else, just like Peter did. Sometimes we got the punishment. Sometimes we suffer in comprehensible hardship like Job. But we have to remember God does not give up on us. God does not live our lives as they are. But he always restores and heals us. 
What is the proof of this healing? It is Jesus Christ. The coming of Jesus Christ proved God's love and restoration. The prophet Isaiah prophesies the coming of Jesus Christ. Let's look at Bible and let's read aloud together. Isaiah chapter 42, 1 and verse 2. Let's read 1 and 2. Here is my servant, whom I have heard, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit to the nations. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it hard in the street. Amen. Jesus was God's chosen servant. Jesus came to this sinful world, defeated evil, and established justice. But how did he do it? He did it with compassion and with love. His personality was humble and quiet. He dealt, he dealt tenderly and loving with the weak. Jesus healed those suffering from the sins and evils of this earth. Let's read aloud verses 3, 4, 3 and 4 together. Let's read. A bruised reed he will not break. And a dimly burning wick, he will no cringe. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice. In the word, and the coachman ate for his teaching. Amen. This is one of my favorite Bible verses. Jesus will not break a bruised reed, or quench a smoldering wick. At the time of Jesus, many people were excluded from society. The poor, widows, and orphans, lepers, prostitutes, sick people, and sinners. They were reject rejected by society. People have judged them useless. They are useless people. But Jesus began to heal them. He healed them and set them free to become a community. This was a new way of doing justice. At the time, everyone followed the way of Babylon. That, was, that way was conquering countries with a mighty army and building a great empire. That's the way of Babylon. But Isaiah prophesied a new way. And God's servant will come and he will practice justice in a new way. He will not conquer or dominate, but heal and restore. God has planned a new way of salvation. Let's think about other gods in many religions, in world religions. Their gods are all powerful, ruling and reigning, reigning. None of their gods offer a way to salvation through sacrifice. Their God did not sacrifice for people. But how did God do it? His God, but He came in a human body. He came directly to the lowest place and took our sins upon himself. He died for us and overcame death by rising again. We are saved because of his grace. Amen? Amen. His love bound up a bruised reed that was about to be torn apart. He wrapped his hand Around the week that was about to go out. The wind blows, but the lamp does not go out because the hand of Jesus blocks the wind. Our lives 
are wrapped in the hands of Jesus like that. He protects us. He surrounds us and heals us. Are you hurting your heart? Are you suffering from illness? The Lord will heal you. He sees us with compassion and pours out His mercy. We lived in that love. So let's have faith. Believe in God's healing. Believe in His protection. God keeps us. When I read this story, I can get the best picture of God's caring, God's care. That is the story of Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth is the son of Jonathan, David's best friend, Jonathan. When Mephibosheth was five years old, terrible news came to the palace. There was King Saul and Jonathan died at the hands of the Philistines. The palace is immediately filled with fear. The Philistines were well known for their brutality, and since the king and his son Jonathan were killed, the remaining members of the palace were just targets for destruction. destruction. Especially those related to King Saul could not accept, expect mercy at all. To leave no seed for revenge, everyone will be killed. There was Mephibosheth. In addition, David's soldiers were still a concern. David could have attacked at any time and destroyed all the remaining men of Saul who harassed David. At the worst was expected, all the servants in the palace ran away. So Mephibosheth's nurse also ran away with the five years old Mephibosheth. But at that scene, the nurse tripped and fall, fell, and the child's anchor, ankle was broken in the accident. And they did not have much time to treat it properly. They had just fled to a small town with a five-year-old child with a broken ankle, broken leg. The child did not receive proper treatment and became a cripple. So Mephibosheth lived in a small town as a wounded and nameless person. He was the only descendant of Saul's, Saul's family, but no one knew. He hid his identity as lived as wounded wanderer. Especially the thing that covered him was fear. What did he think of David? David was terrifying to him. He may have thought about David was a person who left such pain and scars on him. And as time passed, one day, strangers came to the Mephibosheth. They were King David's soldiers. So Mephibosheth thought his end has come. The king searched the whole country for Saul's descendants and tried to eliminate them. David has suffered greatly from Saul, so Mephibosheth thought today was the last day of my life. Mephibosheth was brought to Jerusalem on a donkey. The closer he got to Jerusalem, the more he trembled and feared his impending fate. He had lived a pitiful life as a disabled person until now, but now he thought his life would end in execution. He was filled with sorrow. 
finally. Mephibosheth stood before King David. What happened? When he was expecting the judgment of the death, David called at his name. Are you Mephibosheth? Yes, I am Mephibosheth. Don't be afraid. You have no reason to fear. I will show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore all of your land and you will always eat at my table from now on. But people said had expected judgment. But what came was grace. He called it himself a lame man, garbage of royalty, and a dead dog. But David called it him by his name, Mephibosheth, and invited him to the king's table. The grace of healing came to the wounded Mephibosheth. My beloved brothers and sisters, Jesus heals us the same way. When we are like spiritually lame people, when we are weak and vulnerable, when we call ourselves a dead dog, Jesus Christ comes to us and calls us by name. He invites us to his table and says, let's eat together at my table. We expected judgment, but what came is the grace of the Lord, Jesus Christ. There was true healing from God, our Savior. God said this in last verses 6 and 7. Let's read together the last verses 6 and 7. Let's read. I'm the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. Amen. Jesus will open our blinded eyes. He will set free us from the dungeon in darkness. He does not give up. The Israelites could not get rid of their sins no matter how much punishment they received. And they fell into sin again and again and again and again. God could have made everything disappear and turn into nothing. But God remembered his promise to them. So God did not give up and open the way, the new way to true salvation. He decided to send Jesus Christ. What day, what we expected were judgment and death. But what came was grace and life through Jesus Christ. My beloved brothers and sisters, maybe we are a bruised reed and a fading lamp. I like the picture of today's bulletin. This is a bruised reed. He will not break. We like this, but Jesus loves us and heals us. We thought it would be broken and extinguished. But healing and grace have arrived like Mephibosheth. So let's hold the hands of Jesus. He is with us today at this place. He will touch our hearts and heal us. That is the grace we received. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Let's take a moment for a silent prayer.
brings us Gurmita's. Now we are going to sing the closing hymn. Please rise and praise our Lord together. Breathe on me, press around. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure, until with thee I will, one will, to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am holy thine. Part of me close with thy far divine. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die. But live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Go for in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you.